Welcome to my channel. This is Social Slinks. This is a part two of a previous video called the and of a series called the Forgotten Story of the Saigon Commune. You'll be able to find uh, the part one in the top right hand corner. Um, where we left off is talking about on how uh, Ho Chi Minh ended up actually siding with the French armies uh, into um, into promising that they would not get involved within the help for uh, with the Saigon Commune to help out into destroying the French armies. And after the French armies requested their help, that they would essentially uh, do so. Um, and that and that's and that's basically where we left off at. So without further ado, let's continue the entire let's continue the uh, video and the story of the Saigon Commune. The workers were told everywhere around the city, thousands in anger and disgust at the Indo-Chinese Communist Party, and capitalists trying to retake control of Saigon. Many ended up joining the proletarian militia, and uh, some even fled to the countryside later in midst of news, only to get caught by the French armies outside the city and be taken as prisoners to later be executed. The French armies have been uh, busy destroying any form of rebelling among peasants and workers in the countryside of Vietnam, and they had gathered quite a lot of information as well when doing so. The struggle group being the vanguard of the Saigon Commune knew this. Thus, for two days, a congress among all proletarian militants was held uh, with elected bodies of representatives into, committee, into the Committee of Military Affairs. There, they talked about the French armies uh, that supplied a lot of them, uh, a lot of themselves through the grain and food that they would take for uh, themselves by peasants, and be armed with the workplaces that would uh, produce guns from the labor of workers. So they plan. So they planned is. So they plan. Uh, is that if you are able to stop their supplies and to be able to have your own force concentrate supplies in one area and as well as then spread in misinformation that you have left over weapons caches uh, when in reality there are uh, ambushes set for French armies. It was also uh, decided uh, in the Congress that trenches would be pl would be placed around the city so that so that uh, they would be able to easily pick off their enemies in descent in defensive uh, uh, positions. All had been dis had been discussed and then had been voted unanimously to do so. Trenches and barricades were uh, constructed outside the city. Workers in the city were given all firearms needed to fight against the coming French threat. As well as scouts, a part of the proletarian militia were dispatched to give information to give misinformation to defend to give uh, information to defensive forces on the approaching French armies, and as well as give as well as spread misinformation to the French armies. Scouts would all scouts would all be found shot immediately to when the shots were fired. The commune heard it, and the war was fought. For half of the entire month of this fighting, the Saigon Commune would uh, be dealing with this daily. It was a fight of the day uh, for the proletarian militant. You wake up, eat breakfast, go to the trenches, go home, eat dinner, maybe have sex with your lover, maybe read a book, maybe play a board game, and go to sleep. However, for the French, the French general at the time was given massive pressure from the Paris to take the city or else he and his officers would be punished accordingly. An already special force to protect private property and the accumulation of capital in foreign regions, that being the standing army of the bourgeois state machine, that is by function already putting pressure and intimidation to the proletariat under the bourgeois state's rule, has now been given pressure from the bureaucracy directly and had been told to take care of the revolutionary proletariat immediately. So, what happened after this? Well, the unthinkable and most savagery and most inhumane uh, thing happened, and honestly, this is uh, probably one of the worst crimes that the French would ever commit during their time in Vietnam. It's not exactly known or on how they would do this. Rather, uh, in one of their cavalry charges, they would capture proletarian militants and then keep them detained and somehow uh, had captured their family members fighting. Or they would uh, take leftover uh, ships that were not that were not sunk and uh, had soldiers uh, sneak into kidnap family members or the militants themselves to be able to be able to create disruption among the commune. But what ended up happening is that the French army ended up capturing militants and families of militants and held them uh, for ransom, including children by the ages of four and seventeen. 
and that if they had not surrendered the city, all captured forces would either be life prisoners in Paris or they would be executed. The majority of the executed would be the militants themselves, and life prisoners in Paris would mainly be the children of the four, of the ages of 4 to 17. The Commune now had a massive political debate of what must be done. There was an outrage at the, Fr at the French, obviously, but they had uh, been already doing everything they can, due to them not preparing long enough before the revolution took place and securing every position and vulnerability they had. So, they were left either to negotiate, give up, or keep fighting. There was many debates, discussions of what must be done soon. However, it was longer just about uh, the captured. Um, but now they started talking about the underground uh, exchanges that had been happening among certain citizens, a part of the Saigon Commune. And if they should have capital punishment, or if there should be a more of a root effort not uh, allowing uh, the French have easy have such easy underground access to the Commune thanks to the use of the river in the north, and if they and if they should uh, be an effort uh, to build a dam. reason this was debated was, uh, so much was because uh, building this dam would uh, decrease the amount of extraction for water in the commune, thus essentially depleting the commune of its water source. Not only that, but if... But it even got more rooted, and very uh, and very few workers started thinking that the struggle group wasn't really the best with the Saigon Commune, and that they had failed to meet uh, their own expectations that the proletariat gave up gave for them, and they thought too that the uh, reinstitution of the standing army and the police force was needed, and that the pro that yeah the proletariat ended up thinking that the reinstitution of the standing army and the police force was needed. And very few thought reinstituting commodity production uh, and the market and private property would be beneficial. Of course, none of this was able to happen, and very few uh, that that brought uh, that thought that ended up having uh, to be held as suspects against the revolution, and the proletariat in the mass majority deciding to execute the leaders uh, and detain the rest for education. Things had uh, had gone had gone south really fast. Uh, there was still organization discussion taking place, many political disputes that uh, deviled into philosophical di uh, disputes that had not uh, been settled before the Saigon Commune was established. Then now there wasn't enough uh, building of the party and building of the vanguard to where it can reach on the international scale and also plan out fully all operations that could happen and the effective responses to it. But things were about to get worse. Even after the proletariat had ended up actually even betraying its own interests by wanting to reinstitute the standing army uh, and reinstituting private property, but ended up not doing so due to the fact that even proletariats and that the proletariat in its mass majority ended up actually executing them, actually executed other proletarians that had counter revolutionary ideas and counter revolutionary positions, things were only about to get worse. During this fighting from the French bourgeois imperialists against the Saigon Commune, the Viet Minh, when they saw a lot of the struggles the French standing army was having against the proletarian militia, they started to become a bit paranoid that if the Saigon Commune had been able to defeat the French standing army, the Commune would have uh, expanded its revolution and grew its revolution to be permanent, to where the worker state would uh, be in all of Vietnam and the 4th International be able to base itself off uh, that of where it's able uh, to, to have more revolutions from the proletariat after being educated and after their class and political consciousness expanded as a class on the international scale where they fear that the 4th International will act as a vanguard party. In this fear, Ho Chi Minh proceeded to make, to make outlandish claims uh, and conspiracy theories about the struggle group and workers that support the struggle group in the Saigon Commune. He then proceeds to claim them to be reactionary and working with the Japanese, with absolutely no evidence to back the claim, as well as, uh, and, and no historical evidence where the Saigon Commune, as, and as well as there's only historical evidence where the Saigon Commune was established out of fighting against the Japanese fighters out of Saigon to create the worker state in the first place. Then he claimed the workers uh, to be reactionary and was damaging to the revolution. He went so far to try and use the invasion of Manchuria as an example to fit this conspiracy theory. In September of 1931, at the time of the Japanese invasion of Manchuria, Japanese uh, 
security uh, made contact with the first three. The two parties signed a pact. The Trotskyist group agreed to not advance any propaganda against the Japanese invasion. Japanese uh, security agreed to make over the Trotskyists a sum of three hundred dollars monthly, as well as other uh, as well as other sums, uh, according to the results of the services rendered. Ho Chi Minh, Ho, uh, Ho Chi Minh, and Ho Chi Minh to the ICP of nineteen forty five. So basically, he's claiming here, of course, that the that yeah, the Trotskyists were basically uh, funded by, well, the Japanese forces that were invading in Manchuria, which he provides no proof of. He just claims it, and the party just takes it. And uh, and then tw and then in 1946, towards the end of 1936, and then 1946, towards the end of 1936, the politics of the uniting against the Japanese triumphed in the events of Tai on uh, of Taiwan. Faced with the defeat of their politics of the Civil War, the Trotskyists, um, uh, Truan uh, Modao and uh, Tai Dui Leit, uh, decided to organize an assassination of Wang Di uh, Treat, uh, one of the most convicted followers of the National Front. Now, I am talking uh, to you about the 1937 about 1937, the period that preceded the war, everyone united to fight the Japanese except the Trotskyists. These traitors met conditionally and adopted the resolution of which here are some abstracts. In the war against the Japanese, our position is clear. Those who wanted the war have the illusions about the Kuomintang government who can con who concurrently have committed treason. The union between the Communist Party and Kuomintang is nothing but conscious treason and other ig and other uh, ignorance of this kind. Ho Chi Minh, Ho Chi Minh to the ICP in 1946. So basically, he claims that uh, that Trotskyists had hadn't united against the Japanese, which is completely false. The entire point of the Saigon Commune and the struggle group working with the Saigon Commune was originally to fight against the Japanese fighters. And as well as the fact he's confusing uh, anti-popular front uh, between the Communist Party of China with the Kuomintang as an actual example, apparently, uh, that they essentially were against any form of uh, pop of any form of uh, united action against the Japanese. They did not essentially, they weren't against any form of united action against the Japanese. They just didn't want to work with the bourgeoisie to do so, but rather a united action to where the more power could be handed into the workers themselves. Regardless, though, Ho Chi Minh made these claims, and he even makes another claim uh, as well, which is even more ridiculous. Quote, The Trotskyist Kwan Jaun Kin uh, has sworn that Ton Niga Hai charged him with the advancing defeatist propaganda amongst the combatants of demonstrating uh, to them that China cannot win for... Even if we end up driving out the Japanese, the Americans and the English will still be there to oppress us. That not only can we not win, but our land will be destroyed if we continue the war. Um, that China is too weak to struggle against Japan. England and America at the same time. Truong uh, Mo Dao uh, finished his instructions with these words. We must exploit the policies of the National Front to denounce the communists and say that uh, that they have sold out the working class. Our aim is uh, foment and discontent amongst the combatants. Under the pretext of educating them, the Trotskyists organized the most backward elements of the army in small groups. Then, uh, profiting, then profiting by the harsh conditions of life in the army, they encouraged them to desert with arms and ammunition. In La Zion, uh, with bandits, they created disorder behind uh, the lines of the 8th Eighth, Eighth Army while it was in full com combat. Ho Chi Minh, Ho Chi Minh to the ICP in 1946. There, there was indeed Trotskyists that did indeed call for Viet Minh soldiers to entirely abandon their posts uh, uh, when they were essentially uh, employed into the into uh, the standing army. However, how Ho Chi Minh is basically using this is very much wrong. Uh, many Trotskyists, in, in fact, even ended up actually uh, calling for um, these, these soldiers to abandon their posts. For that, yeah, the Viet Minh sold out the working class, but not that because that they should support the Japanese or the Americans or British, but rather that they shouldn't. But rather that the Viet, but the Inter Chinese Communist Party should not substitute policy over the working class without having direct consultation to them directly. Regardless, Ho Chi Minh spin this in his way, and many uh, Indo Chinese Communist Party uh, like uh, bureaucrats that were loyal to him ended up believing this.
but even though that all these claims were baseless and not true, especially when many Trotskyists such as Ten Desui, Hu Shi, and others were already expelled from the Communist Party at this point. As well as there's no evidence that the struggle group had stepped foot into China during the Chinese Revolution. By doing this, Ho Chi Minh then offered the French general leading the army against, against the Saigon Commune, help from the Viet Minh together to fight against the common enemy for a goal to keep the treaty they made with the French. The French that were in struggle uh, with taking the Saigon Commune and needing more supplies, men, and weapons against the workers' state, against the worker state. So, the French uh, accepted their offer. So, the French didn't even offer the help from the Viet Minh, but then the Viet Minh actually then offered that to them, which is even more of a betrayal to uh, the working class. By hearing this news, the officers of the French army uh, had their morale shaken up, and now they had uh, started making more revolution, uh, revolutionary pushes against uh, the front outer districts, towns outside the Saig outside of Saigon, uh, which acted as a small yet uh, effective sniper point, uh, and also dug bases for the proletarian militia, as alongside with the trenches that they made. There, they launched a very uh, very limited shells of artillery that they had left in the houses of, of the towns. Many families, a part of the commune and the French occupation, uh, that had been uh, ac uh, activated by the militia and the army, all saw their homes uh, decimated and blown to rubble. Then they proceeded to charge soldiers into the gun fields of the trenches, where thousands uh, lost their lives due to the great efforts uh, and fighting from the workers in the trenches fighting for the maintenance of the revolution. However, when cavalry charges were declared with uh, back infantry drop men uh, to, to be in the back of the horses and then dropped into the trenches as they jump over the trenches, infantrymen then had access within the trenches to kill 10 militants per charge. The French repeated this until one trench after another trench was taken by the French standing army, as they made more drop men tactics. However, more Mosins were distributed to the proletarian militants and more M1 Garins uh, as well, rather than ha uh, uh, rather than more rather than more uh, automatic weapons such as uh, the SVTs and the Karuska 38 8s um, that were originally used by the proletarian that were originally used by the proletarian militia. Thus, the commune uh, was able to adapt the tactics of the, fr of the French from their, uh, from their own understanding of past weapon manufacturing in the city. But just when they started uh, getting the upper hand once again, the Viet Minh showed up in mass, and there they sniped one militant after another in trees, in long distance away outside the battlefield, and uh, then assaulters would a uh, able to aid the French when they were able to go for the large charge one uh, once one by one militants were getting picked off. There, they uh, had reached the very border between the outside district city uh, of the commune and the rest of the claimed territory by the French. Now, with the district betrayal of the Indochin now with the uh, direct betrayal of the Indochinese Communist Party that was massively influenced by the bureaucracy of the Communist International that dissolved at this point, uh, and the revisionism of Joseph Stalin and Mao Zedong. In unison, fight from the French and the Stalinists against the Trotskyists and the Sangonian and the Sangonian working class. The Saigon Commune uh, was about to be invaded, and the city of Saigon itself was about to be a battleground. To where we are about to to where the fall of the Saigon Commune was then essentially about to commence. In late 1945, the French and Vietnam stormed the Saigon Commune. Once they entered, after everything uh, they went through, and after everything they had been put up through, that has been uh, th that has been threatened by the interests of the Saigon Commune, when they chose to rise up against the op the oppression, exploitation, alienation, inhumane activities, and functions of capitalism, and the bureaucracy and dictatorship of liberals and fascists. Thus, like every other bourgeois class, due to their economic interests and class interests over the interests of others to generate profit and maintain the highest rate of profit as possible in a mode of production where exchange value was the most uh, driven format of the to the economy uh, to the production of products, 
they made actions and consequences that would result into the deaths of people due to uh, it not being profitable to help them. When they need to maintain their lives and luxuries, they were able to grab for themselves and, other, and others uh, they are close to. In district after district, the Saigon Commune, workers including women and children, were beaten and abused by the French and Viet Minh soldiers that came uh, and acted uh, a reign of abuse uh, against the people uh, of the Saigon Commune. First, they started to take the northwest of the Saigon Commune, which was a small corner of the commune called Phu Mahong. Um, and then uh, more Viet Minh uh, started using guerrilla tactics within the city, um, where the small corner grew eventually into the entire northwest of the Saigon Commune. Um, after more and more proletarian militants were being overwhelmed with the forces of the interests of capital. There was brutal and long amounts of fighting in the city when the bourgeois armies infiltrated the uh, worker state. Workers in their militias fought desperately and, uh, and fought for... Uh, to their last breath, defending, uh, defending what they had gained uh, back from the amount from the amount of oppression that the capitalist system uh, had made them go through. Blood and bodies were in how blood uh, and bodies were in houses and streets of many soldiers and many workers. Morale among the armies and even the Viet Minh soldiers were keeping low, at, while the proletarian militia was determined to keep on fighting against the invaders of the commune. So much so that the proletarian militia ended up making night attacks against the bourgeois armies, completely catching uh, by surprise and able to regain some territory among the northwest part of the Saigon Commune. When the generals of the French army saw this, they were afraid that all their efforts uh, would be in vain and their takings would end up being taken back by the revolutionary working class. They had already left over supplies and back up men, uh, but what good does it does that do if they just uh, meet the same fate as the rest of their fellow fighter, fighters up um, up ahead in the battle? At that point, you're just making your demise longer instead of stopping it. But there were enough men and supplies now open to a new front against the commune if they uh, wanted to. And tactics to break the regains of the proletariat of Saigon. So that's what they so that so that's what was planned um, by the heads of the standing armies and Ho Chi Minh agreed to help any way they can. A new front from the south was planned and was about to uh, be acted on to where this action would play in favor of the capitalist order. Meanwhile, many civilians, such as the citizens lower on the age of 17, the age that would uh, consider you as an adult of the Saigon Commune, was evacuated uh, uh, from the fighting in the north and, were, uh, and, were, and was thus uh, relocated into ports, as well as uh, in the uh, Heap Fiok Island. This would be important to where the French uh, is planning to strike. Workers had collectively organized an, an unanimous vote of tactics and strategy. The militants agreed that the fighting should uh, be a priority, however, it shouldn't uh, be the main priority. Thus, militants were kept at watch of guarded, peop uh, uh, of guarded people to the civilians until the fighting is able to kick, until the fighting is able to uh, to basically kick off, and un and un and until more democratic discussion is uh, is able to take place of what will happen to the civilians under the under the uh, adult age. At this point, almost every worker in Saigon started uh, started to fight within the proletarian militia. So it was very hard uh, for resolutions to be passed because now, uh, instead of having a group of armed people being made up of the people uh, of the given territory and the people having direct consultation to the, of, on policy of the armed body, now the people literally was the armed body. So, while they were fighting against the bourgeois imperialists and bureaucratic Stalinists, the struggle group was forced to adopt a, a, a military reform that was in a uh, majority of the workers in, in the Saigon Commune to vote in favor to reform the use of unions in the proletarian militia, and thus was made uh, to abolish unions for uh, there being no use of them to, up to that point, and adopt a new form of proletarian mili militant collective organizing government legislation to replace this that to be debated uh, among the Central Committee. 
It was not really good to have a government organize themselves to reform legislation and political debate as as they are uh, as they hear gunshots, campfire, and screams outside the window. Thus, this experience for the elected leaders of the workers would actually be too traumatized uh, and too focused on the fighting when they are trying to debate military and, pol and political practicality and efficiency. Thus, the Central Committee was under vulnerability when the commune needed it most. Things then got worse. The French took various boats and launched a heap of machine gun fire on the low-supplied militants that had been organized to defend the children, kids, adolescents, and the teenagers in the port buildings of the Heap Foyoke Island. After that, soldiers were uh, deployed from the boats and took positions of the entire southeast up to the uh, Rak Long Kiang uh, and the Rak Ong uh, Lon of the Saigon Commune with little information from the workers that, uh, that the attack had started. Soon, they were finally met with fighters from the proletarian militia that slowed down uh, their advancement of the main center of the city. However, the damage uh, had already been done. And the bourgeois army of the French had taken the south uh, southern uh, swamp countryside of the commune, and as well as a coalition of fighters from the French and Viet Ninh in the north of the commune. The worker city of Saigon has been invaded and was being fought on two fronts, and due to the lack of long building of the International Communist League, i.e. the struggle group, if they had built their uh, organization a bit more, as well as the 4th International having more practice uh, around uh, this time, and not so focused on the slip-ups from Trotsky's theories on the USSR, and on the Second Imperialist War, as well as the fall uh, into the same problems of the 3rd International with suppression of opposition and desire to substitute over the proletariat from bureaucracy that Manuel Moreno uh, would make of the 4th International. However, the damage has already been done. The French uh, declared the meeting, uh, declared for a meeting between the two forces to split uh, the workers' state in half. The plan was to have the armies meet in the middle of the workers' state that amassed a huge territory of the entire workers' state. The plan was a major stretch for one. They had struggled to get to the territory they had just then. Yes, this was, yes it, this was a perfect time to strike, but how can you strike when you have nothing to strike with? To put more detail, supplies and men had already been stretched as far as they, ca as they had, uh, and reinforcements and resupply wasn't able to uh, happen to such a magnitude where it would be effective. Next was the will and the morale of the enemy. The, proletari the proletariat of Saigon were determined in keeping the workers' state intact as long as possible, and although they did not have the fancy weapons of the bourgeois armies, they had the knowledge of the weapon builders that built the very guns and tools they used to engage into economic violence for the bourge uh, against the bourgeois. Um, economic violence for the bourgeoisie and political violence for the bourgeois state, as well as they knew uh, the city for they lived uh, there for quite a long time, or had gone used to it, while many soldiers had just entered for the first time, and maps were used often by them to navigate, to where it's hard to navigate with those maps when you're in a battlefield. Regardless of all these problems, the order was a go, and so they pushed and they failed. Um, the workers state the workers state had had ar had actually managed to keep them in place in the north and and they had actually won uh, back some territory pushing the soldiers back into the gates of Saigon this was what the proletariat needed just then to be able to stick it to their oppressors and be able to show their strength to their enemies and be able to maintain the revolution and have the revolution remain in permanence until capitalism is defeated the proletarian militia had been very happy, but there, but there were to be no victorious breaks yet. The soldiers weren't completely gone, and they knew there was, uh, there was uh, to be new attacks in the future. They were correct. After the failure of trying to unify the two fronts, the French and the Viet Minh tried to uh, different the approach of taking the commune. They re they resorted a zigzag attack. The north uh, was to attack. Uh, the western districts, as the south was uh, to attack the more eastern uh, districts. Then they were uh, to meet uh, at Bin Hong, the southern area with rivers, where then they would uh, corner the entire worker state to the northeast. The plan was executed, and after a long amount of fighting and brave and heroic resistance from the proletarian militia, the first part of the plan was to be able to be taken. However, the second uh, couldn't come, it due, uh, to be, due to the successful fighting from the proletarian militia. 
However, relatively small victory for the workers' stay, however meaningless unfortunately compared to the totality of the situation, and how they lost more territory just as they managed to retake it as they just as they managed to retake land from the fighters of the interests of the bourgeoisie. Then, for some reason, the Southern Army decided to say, screw it, and went for the Central Committee of building of the Saigon Commune. The struggle group was evacuated, and the proletarian militia did not see it coming, and the building was taken. Basically, this is the very first time that, a screw, that I can understand as a screw it moment actually fucking worked. Which is quite funny, honestly, but quite sad when, you know, as a communist. With desperate fighting taking place... Now the, gov now the government of the workers' state could not consult each other in a well-organized manner, and things got very messy from there. Without a proper place um, to discuss policy, and without a proper place to even plan military affairs, everything then becomes a more decentralized, and now certain bands of fighters have to rely on themselves without a form of needed educa educated groups to discuss and to consult the realities and cover the needed actions that has to be taken. To put this into perspective, I'll have to ask a question. Without without that, then you have fighters, yes, but are you but are they able to fight with uh, have the knowledge that is needed to fight in the first place? Well, no. And when all uh, and when all of this has happened, the entire fighting of the proletarian militia came to recapturing this uh, central committee building of the Stowe Group and uh, and be a and be able to have an effective worker state once again. The French armies in the west and the north decided to take uh, advantage, advantages and start, and start a large offensive into the city. Buildings like schools and libraries were uh, burnt in this offensive, and many fighters were pushed all the way back to the Song, uh, uh, Saigon River, where where they would uh, meet their end, uh, where some surrendered and, uh, and most fought to their last breath, and some even resorted to suicide rather than being captured by the French. Uh, future links here. I just want to fucking take a moment on just how sad this is. This is. Literally, people had to resort to suicide uh, rather than actually being captured by the French. That's how committed these workers are. And I, I really try to keep these uh, videos as emotional as possible. You know, just generally serious, but... Holy fucking shit. That's just... Wow. Wow. Um, sorry uh, to come in. I just want to... I want you guys to, like, put that in perspective. In your mind. Imagine people fighting to the last breath and literally resorting... T and some of them even resorting to suicide rather than actually being captured by the French. That is like... There's no words for it. But it's sad. It's not good. Um, it's really sad that, that it's resorted to that. Sorry. I just wanted to... Let's get back to the video. I just want you to guys put that in perspective. That is massive, like, heroic, but also very sad stories and very sad um, endings. The very last of the militants were surrounded by the bourgeois army and the opportunist substitutionists in the city, where they were forced to surrender. The worker state of Saigon, as in the Saigon Commune, fell, and the victory was held by the French and the Viet Minh. Soon after, more blood was about to be spilt. To try and stop the very idea of revolution coming to the minds of the proletariat ever again. But as we all know, you can kill as many communists as you want, but no one will ever kill communism as an idea. There will always be a struggle that would achieve class consciousness somewhere to try and spread more quickly. So, let's talk about the joint massacre. At what happened after the commune fell, as, uh, as with the their massacre of the Paris Commune, thousands upon thousands of workers were executed everywhere around the city of Saigon. In restaurants, town centers, homes, schools, and even the very government building that the Saigon Commune was uh, founded on. As Simon Perrini would put it in his book, Vietnam and Trotskyism, where he says, quote, The vehement strategy of people's war was not as claimed even by Trotskyists, an extension of the strategy of working class revolution. The, lo the long drawn out struggle and the forced Vietnamese people because of the working class revolution of August 1945 was, was betrayed in the most despicable and violent traditions of Stalinism. Apologists for Stalinism, like Spencer, do not even seriously consider the strategy of a workers' revolution advanced by Trotskyists. 
He only quotes the historian uh, Botganeer, who said that the Viet Minh were right to regard resisting the French in Saigon as insane. So-called Trotskyists, like Martin McLaughlin, likewise argued that the Viennese Trotskyists committed a severe tactical error in pressing ahead with strikes and demonstrations in Saigon, because they faced the British-French uh, occupation force with Chinese Kuomintang forces in the north. And quote, Simon Perenni, Vietnam and Trotskyism. Simon Perenni continues, quote, At all these points, when the working class entered into the scene of history in its thousands and millions, which is precisely what makes a revolutionary situation, revolutionary leaders took the working class into struggle, often convinced that it, ha that it held the possibility of defeat. Indeed, the Russian Revolution itself was made on that understanding. What should the Vietnamese revolutionaries have done when the, worker, when the workers formed popular committees? The peasants expropriated the land, and hundreds of thousands took to the streets demanding national independence. The Stalinists of the Viet Minh tried to quell the revolutionary movement in order to dwell, in order to deal with the allied imperialists. The Trotskyists basing themselves on the perspective of international revolution, which was being confirmed by revolutionary movements worldwide. At the end of the war, took took the leadership of, the, of that movement and fought to the end. Those who reject their stand uh, reject the class struggle strategy on which the communist movement is based, worked out by Marx, Engels, and Lenin, and carried out in the practice of the victorious, revo of the victorious revolution of October 17 and the defeated revolutions of Paris 1871 and Ger Germany 1918 and by the Vietnamese Trotskyists in 1945. End quote, Simon Perani, Vietnam and Trotskyism. This was a very, this uh, are very good words and very great contributions from Simon Perani that talks about the biggest bureaucratic actions of the Stalinists and how they ended up killing the proletariat, trying to create revolution for them. They ended up killing, they ended up killing along with the French biggest and the biggest workers' revolution that Vietnam has ever seen, and one of the most greatest examples of a dictatorship of the proletariat. But we should not take the words of Simon Perani a French Trotskyist revolutionary intellectual pro, uh, proletarian, we can take it from the first-hand look of the massacres of the Viet Minh and the French uh, would engage in. In Agon von Soyet's fantastic book on Vietnam, which I quoted earlier, and as well as the fact one of the revolutionaries and survivors of the of the joint massacre of the Saigon Commune said, quote, The rebels themselves were not a harmonious lot. Among them were the members of the popular committees of the Vanguard Youth. Uh, Sao Dias, and even offline groups of the Stalinist Republican Guards. In areas where the popular forces were in control, Frenchmen were shot, and the coolest uh, f uh, fun functionaries of the old regime, uh, the hated pop policemen, known as the population that had participated in torture, sought to kill and thrown the cardinals rat uh, rate thro can can thrown in the canals. Racialism, fed by 80 years of imperialist domination and by content and white men for fellow yellow men, left its an imprint on the violence of the masses, which erupted at moments like these. The massacre of a hundred French civilians in the uh, Harrod estate at Din was a painful reminder of this fact. The threats of certain French colonists to skin the animates alive and make, their, and make leather uh, sandals rebound uh, back against all whites. The occupation forces feverishly searched the whole cent uh, century of town. This did not prevent the insurgents from setting fire to the various important buildings at the manufactured rubber company and warehouses. End quote. Nigo Van Zuyet on Vietnam. All these efforts were to try and dictate what the proletariat wanted without being connected to the proletariat. And seeing what they wanted to do... Um, these are uh, absolute failures and shows the, of bloody repression of actual workers' movements from the workers themselves, all because they do not want to be dictated by quote unquote leaders. Um, they never at, they never asked for to actively make actions to actively make actions against their interests without direct say in uh, into the matters of them. That is the peak of the praxis of first Stalinism. A lot of anti-vanguardists, especially the anarcho-syndicalists, are very uneducated of what the Vanguard Party is and how it does uh, uh, not correlate to Stalinism. Most will ju literally just say Stalin and think that means uh, something without reading Karl Marx, Frederick Engels, or Vladimir Lenin. 
What they actually mean by that, by the concept, is different from Joseph Stalin's. The Vanguard Party is the party of the proletariat. They, they are controlled by the proletariat entirely through the means of centralization to keep that control of the proletariat going. Thus, the workers still lead the revolution even though the means of the vanguard, uh, even through the means of the vanguard. The class and political conscious proletarians will be no better than other proletarians in this instance and act as a commission when the workers are organized, as well as the fact that Stalin's bureaucracy is a, de a degradation of the vanguard and what it's supposed to mean and what we mean as of proletarian leadership. As one of the greatest Marxists, at least I would say, uh, has said, and the very most influential Marxist, uh, possibly into my theories uh, and into my understanding of Marxism, and one of the greatest Marxists in our modern times, Tony Cliff would say, quote, Stalinism is like a hurricane, smashed down on the massive heritage of Marxism and left a desert and left a desert behind it. It was Trotsky and his followers who largely kept the tradition alive. To this small band of revolutionaries, we owe the fact that we uh, discuss many issues of the of the day, and we can still refer back to the experience, theoretical and practical, of generations past. End quote. Tony Cliff, Karl Zetkin, and the German Socialist Movement. The battle is hard. It's always been hard since day one. It it is hard, and it's a struggle to get the working class organized and conscious of their conditions, and for them to act on their interests of having a revolution against the bourgeoisie and capitalism based on their own power. Because of the fact of, op of opposition that tries to stop us, propaganda by the bourgeoisie and the state crushing the movements and suppression of activism, and so much more. But we still stick to the to this road, and we have to get to and we have to be patient and calm with everything, or else we won't get to our revolutionary goals. Like Tha like Tathu Thao, who would also face a fall in the massacre in the Saigon Commune. Speaking of Tathu Thao, I want to talk about his, uh, about the death of Tathu Thao, the leader of the struggle group, and how it happened. For his death was very symbolic, as well as as well uh, is very sad to show how far the International Communist League has fallen, and his death as well shows also the very betrayal and bureaucratic repression that words can never say. During the joint massacre, uh, Thao was still in Saigon as the Viet Minh were looking for him. He was the main guy that Ho Chi Minh personally ordered for execution. So, with two other obscure members of the struggle group, he kept into hiding for each day that the massacres would take place to try and get to the other side of either the Chai Thu Thiam Bridge or the Haim Thu Thiam Bridge, which uh, would get him out of the area where the massacres of the proletariat were taking were taking place. From, uh, from he can regroup uh, with uh, what remains of the struggle group and, es and escapees of the workers of the Saigon Commune and plan on organizing another time. It was a needed action that had to be taken and could be taken at the time, for he, out of few workers, a part of the worker state and members of the, struggle, of the struggle group, was still alive. They moved out in February of 1946 and begun uh, to make it to the bridge itself. It seemed as if they were about to have a great escape, but then gunshots were fired at the at, uh at them from behind, from the behind, and soon they, uh, there was a gunfight between Thai Tu Thao, two, uh, two of his comrades against against uh, what is said to be four Viet Minh trying to kill them. They were in cover at the Haim Thu Thiem Bridge, and they had killed two out of the four Viet Minh. However, reinforcements uh, in tens came up from the bridge, and then came up into the bridge, and then eight more started coming out on the other side. They, in other words, they had been surrounded and only way out was either jump, resulting in certain death, or fight until uh, un until every fire dies. Uh, has a very low chance, but is possible, or to surrender, to end up dying later, for you were uh, the most wanted man in Vietnam at that point. Thus, the fighting continued as later uh, in the fighting as. Tai Thu Thao stood up trying to reload his gun, and there he was shot by a Viet, Viet Minh fighter. 
It wasn't sure what happened next, but what ended up happening is that Taizu Thao ended up getting pushed back to the rail of the bridge after being shot two more times, and from there he ended up falling off the bridge into the river, and most likely bled to death uh, from the shots in the river. His body was found right outside of the uh, Din uh, Than Bin Triao Church. When Martin uh, McLaughlin, um, a French communist, a part of the Fourth International, was vi uh, that visited Vietnam, took the brave action to ask Ho Chi Minh where Thai Thu Thao was in a panel held by the Communist Party of Vietnam. Ho Chi Minh responded. Tai Thu Thao was a great revolutionary and was very principled in his ideas. However, people will be met with the needed action that goes against the revolution of the peasantry. The hypocrisy here. This is the same man that sided with the French to kill the revolutionary state of the proletariat and peasantry in Vietnam. The hypocrisy here is beyond um, just over the roof. It is to the sky. It is to space at this point. There were more uh, members of the struggle group uh, and anti min communists that actually emerged after the Saigon Commune. After the death of Tai Thu Thao and many Saigon proletarians and members of the International Communist League, few remained and they were crippled uh, and many of their influential leaders such as Nigo Vuan and Tai Thu Thao and others were gone and had died during the period of the Saigon Commune or met to see the end of it uh, with execution and life imprisonment. As well as the Viet Minh knew that there were small channels of the struggle group all over Vietnam that had a potential of centralizing and having the struggle group pose once again a threat to capitalism and Vietnam and all over Indochina. What ended up happening is that Ho Chi Minh then ordered for any suspected anti min leftists to be rounded up and either held on trial or, if needed, quote unquote, shot to death right then and there. This did not then uh, just was an attack against the Trotskyists, but an attack against the anarchists and libertarian socialists that were very obscure in the movement and actually really lacked little effective organize, uh, organizing proletarians and peasants compared to the struggle group as the Trotskyists. Around this time, Martin McLavin would visit Vietnam himself and would quickly be arrested and found guilty by the Vo North Vietnamese courts of being anti Viet Minh counter revolutionary but wasn't found guilty of taking part within the struggle group thus was let go without uh, thus was let go at, without punishment and the fact that he was a french foreigner uh, and they did not want to upset the country um, they literally helped crush a workers revolution just to make peace with them Martin McLavin en ended up getting mad at at this and was written uh, was written uh, in his in his memoirs that after this trial he immediately got in contact with the struggle group and offered members any form of support he can such as ink press publishing guns food organizing material plans for organs of soviets and access to uh to write works on the on international uh waters as well as even safe passage and pay uh, to immigrate to other countries to reorganize safely outside of a country that was actively hunting down a crippled revolutionary proletarian party uh, that was once a vanguard party. The struggle group ended up taking the offers, but knew that for, that for them it, to be truly safe, they did indeed have to immigrate. But not only did they have to immigrate, but their members had to split up into other into other continents around the world to not only have to face to to not only have to face the terror of the Ho Chi Minh uh of but in China and Russia as well and the increasing eastern bloc which were puppet states of the USSR after the second imperialist war that were already more than happy to arrest communists and workers that would be seen as a threat to the capitalist economics and bourgeois state structure that was made uh, for these countries. Thus, they had to even go somewhere uh, where uh, more preferably out of the hands of the USSR. Thus, many ended up uh, taking the immigration offer, offer and immigrate to Chile and Argentina where they would reorganize. With the support of Martin McLavin uh, and, the, and the entirety of the Internationalist Communist Organization, the French branch of the Fourth International, um, 
to do so where they can reorganize and publish works and continue on being international revolutionaries. However, not everyone was able to escape, and some were unfortunately forced to stay in Vietnam and stay all the way till the Vietnamese Civil War, or commonly referred to in the Viet or and in Viet uh, in Vietnam as the American War and in America the Vietnam War, where they would be arrested and executed on the spot by both the Viet Cong and North Vietnam and South Vietnam and the U.S. Marine Corps. As well as many others were literally forced to escape and flee to the country when some struggle group member ended up ended up being ruled as exile uh, member ended up being ruled as exiled instead of being imprisoned uh, for either life and uh, forty year and and more than forty years uh, 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 of pri- of imprisonment or sentenced to death, where many. Uh, to where many of them tried taking exile into Chile and Argentina to meet up with comrades they had not seen for quite a long time. By the time they Im- they had immigrated, however, the struggle group was uh, and what was known had died, with the Saigon com- with the Saigon Commune, and many of the last members knew that they knew nothing was going to be the same, and that their group wasn't going back to Vietnam for a long, long time. Many were depressed and some had even given up on communism, taking a defeatist position on things and left the group and started a new life with new identities. Many others stayed but knew that things had to indeed adapt and that things must be brought back to square one, but done so with other ways of publishing. Thus, while in Chile, there was a mass majority vote in the struggle group to dissolve the organization and declare the end of the International Communist League of Vietnam. So that way, in their mind, the party does not. So that way, the party does not degenerate uh, into a reminiscent, uh, into a reminiscent of the past and uh, and an overfixation of the struggle group. Uh, I mean, of the Saigon Commune, but learn from the Saigon Commune, although only 10 members remained of the last ones. Thus, the, thus, uh, thus a Bolshevik Leninist group, however, the Bolshevik Leninist group uh, of Vietnam was established in Chile that acted as a political organization in representation of the Vietnamese politics that ended up spent that ended up spreading to citizens in Argentina, to where they ended up having two headquarters in two different countries. Once established, they quickly joined the, US, the US, uh, USFI after the 4th International had been dissolved, and many splits took place uh, to claim that there was a true international left opposition still around, even the uh, USFSI, United Secretary of the 4th International, that had uh, a split and expelled a faction that led a new, interna- that, uh, led a new international organization. The split created the uh, CWI, Communist Workers International, and the expulsion created the International Socialist, the IST, the International Socialist Tendency. Thus, from their creation, the Bolshevik Leninist group of Vietnam, they actually saw a further degeneration by going a lot by going by a lot of problems of organizing historically that that historically took place in the Orthodox Trotskyist movement, that try. Uh, that tried to have either unions act as a revolutionary organizations that would only substitute over the workers and make actions to sustain the capitalist system and bourgeois state due to the unions having to operate in the two, or liquidating the role of the vanguard and trying to focus on united fronts when united fronts were not needed or completely misunderstand what a united front is defined by Trotsky or seek to substitute over the proletariat through the use of the political organization that claims to be a quote-unquote vanguard party. But in reality, just as but just is a but just is a sect party. The Bolshevik Landis group fell into the United Front problem. However, even though they tried calling for a unity of Trotskyism, when at the same time fight. Uh, fighting against it, they did make a good criticism of the Communist Party of Vietnam that was made by them called The Nature of the Vietnamese Communist Party by the Bolshevik Landist Group of Vietnam, which is a work that I read myself and uh, has even been even been tried to be published in Vietnam, but was banned after the Communist Party found out about the work and after being a ver- and, uh, uh, and uh, it being a very big criticism in, in all of Vietnam. To quote the work itself, which is I think is very good about the work, quote, 
Two, the theoretical possibility that the Stalinist leadership could go further than itself wanted on the road of breaking with the bourgeoisie had been uh, investigated by the transitional program. In China, in Yugoslavia, and in Vietnam, uh, it was parties which uh, were members of the Comintern, which organized huge peasant masses uh, militarily and politically around democratic objectives, national liberation, democratic liberties, agrarian reforms. Probably little to post to jump through the stages and rapidly give anti-capitalist objectives to the struggle that were leading. They were led uh, to do so in order to be able to conquer precisely the democratic demands uh, that they uh, had fixed for themselves. Uh, it was thus that three parties of Stalinist origin became the unexplored agents of that permanent revolution that they had been taught to fight against. Three. These three parties did not carry in themselves the, ger the germs of dissidents. For many years, they were totally subordinated to the wishes of the Kremlin, even, uh, even if their development suffered from it. The Chinese Communist Party paid for this alignment in the 1920s with an unprecedented disaster. Tito reorganized the Yugoslav Communist Party as from 1937 with the complete agreement of Stalin and the Comintern. As for the Vietnamese Communist Party, it is an erroneous to present it as a being relatively independent from Moscow since 1930. Like its founder, Ho Chi Minh, uh, it, was all, it has always uh, tried to preserve its national interests without clashing with the Kremlin head-on. The episode of the United Front with the Trotskyists in 1933 took place in the full agreement of the Third International and with the assistance of the French Communist Party. Its breakup took place in the point uh, with the, uh, when the Kremlin had, brought, had, had enough of it, even if the Trotskyists took the initiative for it. The creation of the Viet Minh and the unleashing of armed struggle against the Japanese and the uh, Vichyists uh, was in the framework of the anti-fascist war if the seizure of power in 1945 was not allowed for the pot for the post dom agreement. Still, this initiative of the Viennese of the Viennese Communist Party, though not at all encouraged by Stalin, was not condemned by him either. He used he used it in uh, in his diplomatic dealings. The extremely opportunist line of the Vietnamese Communist Party between 1945 and 1947 shows that in the period it quickly responded to more of the uh, Cancel's moderation from the French Communist Party and from Moscow and the demands of the peasant movement, which it helped to dam up. The heroic struggle of the Viet Minh during the first resistance could not be put the Viet, uh, Vietnamese leadership in opposition to Stalin at the time when the Cold War was going full blast. By signing the uh, respecting uh, the Geneva Accords of 1954, Ho Chi Minh and his comrade showed that the friendly pressure of the Soviet and Chinese big brothers still had force of law for them. It was only after the 20th Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and the unleashing of the Sino-Soviets of the Sino-Soviet conflict that the Vietnamese leadership clearly separated itself from Moscow and required an independent position which it has preserved. The, Bolshe end quote, the Bolshevik Leninist Group of Vietnam on the nature of the Vietnamese Communist Party. This is a very truthful statement from the work. The work then criticizes many other things that I shall quote again uh, that are very good and must be indeed be said uh, about the Communist Party of Vietnam. Quote, Five, to define the Vietnamese leadership as empirical revolutionaries is insufficient and could generate illusions. Empirical revolutionaries can educate themselves and eventually link up with revolutionary Marxism on the basis of their practical experience, their reading, uh, and their discussion. Such was a uh, possible evolution of the Cuban leadership before the counterweight uh, of the massive Soviet aid intervened. Nothing like that investigated of the Lao Dong Vietnamese Communist Party, for that matter of comrades of Tito or of Mao, and quote, Bolshevik Leninist group of Vietnam on the nature of the Vietnamese Communist Party. As we can definitely confirm from the statement looking at their actions and their positions on the Saigon Commune, the first effort of the proletariat in Vietnam actually making their own revolution based on their own power and actual connections with revolutionary theory that is realized by other workers they chose. A worker state itself is the revolution, yet they crushed it, helping the French. 
Anyways, to end uh, with another criticism, uh, is very clear based on their actions historically and how the policies and resolutions came to be. We, I'd like to quote this uh, once again. Quote, Six, the Vietnamese Communist Party can be characterized today as a bureaucratized, as a bureaucratized workers' party. Its ideology and its organization come directly from Stalinism. It's ruled by bureaucratic centralism, and political discussions only take place at the highest level of the Politburo. The lower levels have no beyond discussion, uh, discussing and the application of the line. The education given in the militants has only a remote relation to Marxist education which would be aimed to develop knowledge and critical awareness. Essentially, they study the editorials of the party paper, the speeches of the party leaders, and some chosen extracts from Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Stalin. Obedience and loyalty to the party are the cardinal virtues of the militant. However, the relations which the leadership has uh, the masses uh, differentiate the Vietnamese Communist Party profoundly from all from almost all the other communist parties in power, and they put it to close to the Chinese Communist Party. Lao Dong rules the uh, po- the paternalist uh, manipulation and control of the masses, and not by terror. This is not to exclude the perfection of the police apparatus and the impossibility of the, of the slightest political opposition, but the Vietnamese Communist Party prefers to act uh, uh, through imposed consent rather than by brutal repression. The aim is that the line worked out by the Politburo should appear uh, as the only correct line and every Vietnamese uh, should apply it without uh, even imagining uh, that other uh, solutions might be possible without being counter-revolutionary. The means are strict, control of information, permanent and compulsory indoctrination, lectures, loudspeakers in the streets, uh, multiple meetings, etc., and close linking of the cadres with the population. The Vietnamese bureaucracy is defined less by the seizure, by the seat, by the size of the material privileges that it disposes of, of than by its belonging to a rigorously confined, uncontrolled, uncontrollable hierarchy, which has a monopoly of powers of decision in this respect. It can be said that since the seizure of power, there has been a constituted, as in uh, Yugoslavia, a bureaucratic layer whose material and social advantages de- depend on the hazards of economic situation. End quote. The Bol- Bolshevik Landist Group of Vietnam on the nature of the Vietnamese Trotskyist Party. And finally, to end it. Its appearance uh, has, has to be sure, been very much uh, favored by what is called the objective circumstances, economic and cultural backwardness, short, shortage of cadres, isolation, etc. But the decisive factor explaining the rapidly and inevitability of the bureaucratization was the deliberate will of the Vietnamese Communist Party to organize the party and the state on the inspiration only the Soviet and Chinese experiences. The privileges which the Vietnamese political cadres dispose are rigorously uh, copied from those granted by the counterparts in other bureaucratized uh, worker states. Special shops always have supplied other prices uh, of chiffers free to holidays, reserved hospitals and trips abroad, lodging for the highest salaries depending on the party hierarchies and hierarch- hierarchy advantages, food cards, free medicines, political conferences, and expended paid paid uh, expenses paid etc an absolute value these privileges would uh, be uh, disdained by the Soviet or Romanian uh, party sec- or Romanian um, party secretary but their existence alone is of enormous significance there exists no no mechanism to prevent them growing in proportion as the economy of the country is re- reconstituted at, and it is against them uh, that the political opposition that they will have given birth given birth to uh, to will eventually crystallize. End quote. The Bolshevik Landist Group of Vietnam on the nature of the Vietnamese Communist Party. This is all very much true. All that the Communist Party has done throughout its entire revolutionary th- history is to seek to tell workers what to do, when the proletariat themselves didn't need to be told what to do, but rather, they themselves making the resolutions of what must be done with the intellectual proletarians that seek to spread class and political consciousness. The, propo- 
the purpose of the International Vanguard Party is to organize the proletariat based on the proletariat's own power into doing things and making actions based on their own accords on and democratic discussion that resolute to from mass democratic agreement in large majority. Without this, the efforts of the Vanguard quickly go out of fashion, and then it degenerates into a sect. Workers are not, are not stupid. They are perfectly capable of making their own revolution, and, they, and there doesn't need to be a political organization that makes actions for them out, uh, out the desire to help the uneducated mashes, masses be able to, uh, to get change without having to do so much hard work against their ignorance or whatever some Stalinist, Menshevist, and Kautskyist idea of the quote-unquote Vanguard Party is. A Vanguard Party is not a sect. The Vanguard Party is supposed to be among the workers, and yes, educate them, but not because they are stupid, but because merely, most likely, they do not know the root problems. That And also, sponta spontaneity and decentralization is ineffective at revolutionary work that leads to massive change and progress. However, these are movements that are smart enough to make. They are the key to revolution. We aren't trying to be renegades. We are trying to be comrades. So, what can we get from all this? Well, quite a lot, actually. In one of the biggest instances here, this shows about the counter-revolutionary efforts and the counter-revolutionary actions and even theories uh, that Stalinists have posed within Vietnam, and especially the kinds of efforts that Ho Chi Minh essentially enacted. Various communists and various socialists today even still uh, critically or um, uncritically support Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Minh uh, entirely, and even still the Communist Party of Vietnam. One anarchist, even, such called non-compete, even still claims for Vietnam to even be socialist, um, even despite these counter-revolutionary methods, and especially, um, well, the lack of the abolition of, of classes and the lack of the abolition of money itself, too, as well. And as well as the fact that Ho Chi Minh himself uh, is still remembered as uh, an anti-colonial hero and revolutionary. However, this can be further from the truth. His actions entirely is exactly what led to the entire split up of the North and South Vietnam entirely, and did so through the crushing of a workers' revolution that took place in Saigon in August of 1945 and was crushed in February of 1946. Many even Trotskyists, such as even Simon Perini has, uh, has even mentioned, such as Martin McLaughlin, despite the fact knowing about the entire problems of the, of the, uh, Indo of the Indo-Chinese Communist Party, i.e. the Communist Party of Vietnam, even still claimed uh, that Ho Chi Minh entirely was a hero and that the entire actions of the Trotskyists at Vietnam at the time were too critical to, to Ho Chi Minh and was not entirely, uh, and was even considered ultra left by him for the fact that he refused, for the fact that they refused um, to take up the actual peace treaty at hand. Even though the peace treaty would have resulted into the entire death and the entire um, alienation, and as far as we understand, even the um, and even act as a betrayal against the working class in their own self movement, to which they can actually make their own emancipation. Alongside with this, but with even also um, the various actions and bureaucratic policies that the Stalinist Party essentially implemented. Um, the Trotskyists entirely were expelled by the Communist Party of Vietnam through their opposition, and most likely would have been expelled as well for the fact that they are Trotskyists and that there was a massive anti-Trotskyist hate at the time. Regardless, though, how can this relate to the situation today? Well, this honestly just shows on actually how we should not work with Stalinists at any point at all. Possibly, that's the thing about Stalinists. They, so far in the historical movement and everything that they have done, including in Vietnam itself, where it's considered to possibly uh, be considered as the most successful efforts of Stalinism, has done so through the betrayal of the working class and the entire substitution of the working class as a desire to make revolution for workers themselves, that in told, in consequence, results actually into the actions that are against the interests of the workers and actually even resulted into deaths of revolutions such as what Stalin did as a grave digger of the Russian Revolution and Ho Chi Minh being the very butcher of the Saigon Commune. 
This is something you have to understand. We cannot work with Stalinists or we cannot adopt Stalinist theory when it comes to our entire understanding of Marxist theory at all. The very example of the Saigon Commune is an example of that. Many left communists and many Trotskyists would always point to the Soviet Union and how Stalin himself essentially enacted actions. But then again, Stalin himself is not necessarily the Stalinist movement. The Stalinist movement, however, is the entire historical actions that many Stalinists have taken in throughout revolution. And in that period, one of those was the Saigon Commune and possibly one of the best examples of Stalinist bureaucracy taking, to, uh, taking in order to empower uh, its own party, empower its own tendency, rather than actually working within the working class itself and being alienated to the proletariat. This is a problem of the sects that entirely Stalin has made and that Stalinists essentially make as well in their, uh, in their deviation of Lenin's vanguard party, but rather an adoption of a Kautskyist interpretation of a vanguard party. We must not be Kautskyist like Stalin, we must be Leninists like Trotsky. And one thing that entirely you have to understand about the Indo-Chinese Communist Party is that, and even the International Communist League as well, is that they were is that they were working class parties entirely, but one essentially had a different tendency that essentially made it bureaucratic and alienated the working class, while the other actually adopted the self-emancipation of the proletariat and actually read Karl Marx and Frederick Engels themselves and what Lenin himself would also have to say, and essentially saw that Trotsky essentially was right on a lot of his entire abbreviations, a lot of his theories talking about revolution. But even then, the International Communist League wasn't perfect. I would actually critique of the International Communist League for not actually breaking with the Vietnamese Tr uh, Communist Party earlier. They essentially should have done so uh, during the time period in 1924, or specifically 1926, when the foundations of Leninism was essentially written and was a unit and was adopted uh, by be by a bureaucratic um, order by Joseph Stalin himself to be the policy of the Communist International. Around that point, that was around the time that um, that uh, the that the uh, Trotskyist faction of the Indochinese Communist Party should have split off from the Vietnamese Communist Party at that point, as soon as the Stalinist bureaucracy has and Stalinist revisionism has essentially bureaucratically taken power within the Communist International without democratic vote or democratic say uh, from the general membership or the proletariat themselves. However, even with these mistakes, they still even managed to essentially act as a vanguard party and still in, uh, even let the Saigon Commune be alive and still be around longer than essentially had predicted if, if there wasn't a vanguard party at entirely. We have to be able to analyze the Saigon Commune and take what it did and show on its basic core principles and its basic actions that it did is a true example of a worker's state. Not merely just the state seizing political power and the state essentially seizing the means of production on behalf of the workers by the claims that it's supposed to represent the workers entirely. No. The state entirely has to be the working class. The state itself will and will have to be the workers, as in the workers themselves in their direct authority of councils will have to be will have to make up the organs of governance within the worker state itself and cannot be substituted by the state, by a state authority and by a bureaucracy that is not elected by the proletariat. Rather, all politicians and all leaders essentially being elected by workers and being able to be recalled by um, those workers uh, entirely. Um, and being able to and being able to uh, make action um, and make decision um, based on the goals of the workers themselves and allowing workers to elect policy themselves as well as affect direct leadership um, and direct authority uh, to uh, to that with recallable elections through mass majority vote if they suit if they do so desire. And that is exactly what happened in the Saigon Commune. We had to take that example like what happened in the Saigon Commune, very much like the entire principles of what it would lead up to from the Paris Commune to then in Russia, of, to then in the Russian Socialist Federative Soviet Republic, to then the Ger to then uh, the German Revolution, to then the, Bar to then the Bavarian Soviet Republic, to then the Hungarian Soviet Republic, the Finnish Socialist Workers' Republic, and so on and so forth, and many of the revolutions that took place in 1917 through to 1923. 
and as well as the fact that of this revolution that took place in 1945. And even another revolution that would take place, and in fact, multitude of revolutions that took place in America, Mexico, and France in 1968. And so on and so forth. We have to be able to understand that pure spontaneity, Stalinist bureaucracy, uh, entirely has been the forefronter of what usually essentially has led to the deaths of many socialist and left-wing revolutions throughout the world. Um... And even, and especially this can even be said about even the Black Lives Matter movement and the insurgence of that during the period and the various even revolutions of 2019 uh, to 2020, um, and uh, as well as the fact um, even Occupy Wall Street that took place in 2013. We have to be able to understand these things and we have to be able to analyze these things in order to get to a concrete theory. And what the struggle group did is possibly the best example of it. The best examples of worker states have usually come about with a vanguard party coming about, not necessarily acting over the proletariat, but acting within the proletariat, and even the vanguard and the intellectuals that essentially teach workers to become politically and class conscious, being workers themselves. Again, this essentially fits in ties with the theories of Marx himself and the various ideas of, of him uh, entirely. And this is one thing we have to understand about the failure of pure spontaneity, but also the failure of substitutionism over the working class. As well as the fact, within the liberal movement, we also must make sure to stand clear against liberals and social democrats as well. At least that's a lesson that we can understand the Black Lives Matter movement that essentially came about during, during, 20, during 2020. And we have to be able to understand these things and be able to essentially stand in clear opposition against liberals and capitalists and be, be able to provide our own theories and our own resolutions as well and stay principled, yet also be able to be in the interest and able to understand the working class and be able to stand with workers in their movements, even if they have a liberal tendency. Because you can't have a pure communist tendency or a pure communist movement. The point, however, is to talk with the working class to where you can build that entire structure and even have the workers be recruited into the party to where they can centrally organize but through democratic discussion with revolutionary goals in mind uh, and as well as the fact even to contribute themselves into, con into a good revolutionary tactic in order to act on that in the streets from theory. That is the importance today, and that's the entire point of communists, and this is why I'm a part of the International Socialist Tendency, and why I'm a neo-Trotskyist, because I do indeed think that is not that is the entire tendency, and the entire ideas that essentially continue the works of Marx himself uh, entirely, uh, and is able to adapt to the certain lessons that we have today in our timeline, and why I'm a member of the International Socialist Tendency, because they are possibly the most principled, and, uh, and are the ones that essentially know these things, but must grow throughout time through our through help from us as the communists and as well as the fact from us to talk with workers as well in the streets in their movements not a substitute over them but rather got nor nor guide them to revolution but rather um be able to guide them through revolutionary theory to where they can make their own revolution and be able to essentially uh, show why capitalism is insufficient why revolution is entirely necessary in the first place for them to join the organization so that way that organization can act as the revolutionary basis and the centralized uh, central committee for the Soviets that workers would make themselves. As I said in the video, we are not supposed to be renegades, we are supposed to be comrades. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below. Uh, this is the final part for the forgotten story of the Siren Commune. And uh, yeah, I very much hope you uh, enjoy this video. And if you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. I very much appreciate it. Please share this video so that way we can get these messages a lot more out. And so that way we can spread class and political consciousness as well. And if you see, and if you do indeed um, uh, want to get organized, I did mention about the International Social Tendency to where you can join that. That and there's also countless of other orgs uh, that you can basically find most of the orgs that I'm organized with is usually the internet is the international Socialist tendency, which has a branch in the United States called Marx 21. Um, there is the Freedom Socialist Party, which is part of the committee revolution, which is part of the committee for revolutionary international recruitment. Um, there is the Socialist Party of the United States, which doesn't have an international alignment, but is actually uh, a representation of the age-old party called the Socialist Party of America that essential that essentially got defunct, uh, but reestablished in 1975. Um, and as well as the fact I'm, uh, as well as the fact I'm mostly organized with the FLTI or, uh, and the International Leninist Trotskyist Fraction, uh, um, which has many, which actually has mostly groups in, uh, 
in in Spanish speaking countries, but there is a group in Mexico as well they can po possibly talk to uh, there. But anyways, uh, thank you for watching this video, um, and yeah, um, uh, and there's very much other things that essentially ha that can be talked about when it comes to revolutionary theory. But uh, I think I, I think the Saigon Commune is definitely one of the most important. Um, histories about uh, workers revolution uh, and it shows actually on how there actually was a Trotskyist revolution at one point but ended up actually getting betrayed by Stalinists to where Stalinists today try and claim that there's never been a Trotskyist revolution or there's never been a successful Trotskyist revolution where Alan Woods himself says Stalinists would always claim that uh, that the Trotskyists are outdated but um, they will kill the Trotskyists before they can even implement, before they can even take action on their theory. And yeah, I just want to talk about the Saigon Commune, as well as the fact on how workers were end up killed by the Viet Minh and Ho Chi Minh himself, and why, well, Ho Chi Minh wasn't really such a great guy, and honestly why uh, we shouldn't actually even critically support uh, Vietnam during uh, the Vietnamese, um, during the Vietnam War, but rather stand against both sides uh, and provide actually revolutionary theory on why, um, well, both of them sucked uh, through a communist perspective. But regardless, thank you for watching this video, and I hope you liked this video, and um, yeah, uh, please take care. Uh, bye bye. Socialist Links is out.